like darkness. Welcome back, everyone. My name is Amanda Zero, and as you can see, we're actually back here at Fire Blank Shrine. Not for Omega, I just say you're exploring Irithel. Well, we are, but we have come to get the greatest um, spell for any pyromancer looking for their worth in terms of souls. Since we defeated the old Demon King, we got a soul, and you can get Chaos Bent Vestiges, which is basically the spell for pyromancers and damage or you can get the old king's gray hammer which i never really see anyone use even in pvp but we're gonna get this because this does damage and while boulder heave is a spell you can get in terms of pyromancies it's really not something for tharja i might just consume the soul or i could get havel's ring even though we're not going to be like super over encumbered or anything uh but we got all the spells we need so, peace out, Ludlith. Uh, thank you for giving us one of the best spells in the game for us. Because it's still going to be a while before we learn any true, like, very good, good spells for Tharja. And even though Chaos Pass Vestiges does take up more, you know, attunement points, we're going to head back to Central Aerothel and truly explore the area. Maybe not in full for this episode. Because Irithel is actually a very challenging area to go through. Especially if you don't have uh, buffed weapons like I do. The only buffed weapon you have is the Pyromancy Flame. And yeah, it does damage. It doesn't really help us if we, you know, keep dying. Because Irithel, I believe, has some of the most annoying enemies. And we'll actually see them soon. Not even the Deacon Leagues, which we can now deal with. The only thing about them is that they're super aggressive. With these, uh, when we go here to Irithel, though, you actually see this. An apparition of a lone knight walking forward. And you don't get that a lot here in Irithel. But anyways, uh, the enemies here that I find the most annoying are these. The Pontiff Knights. They do a lot of damage. And they hurt. And I'm going to heal. If you're wondering, and the reason why I say they're dangerous... Ah, crap baskets. Uh, yeah, they're super ultra mega aggressive. <laughs> and they hurt a lot. As you saw, they took out like half my health really, really quickly. And you can actually get their sword fairly early on if you just help out Grey Rat. Can they go past the shield? Oh, crap, he can. I'd never seen... You would think they couldn't go past the shield. Because, like, oh, this is their home. They have to guard it. God freaking dang it. Stop. <laughs> this is why you bring a sword. And even then, it doesn't take long to cast Chaos Bed Vestiges. You saw it? I hit through it up. Bam. And do our damage being pretty high, even at kind of low stats, if I'm being honest. I think we barely just meet the requirement for it. Let's see. Well, we kind of do. It's 20 in intelligence and 10 in faith. And, you know, since we don't... I already put this thing on death's bed. I'm going to rub behind it. But what? Okay. Now give me that backstab. Because mm. we 
bumped off its sword. You can also get their crown here if you want. I don't know why. It just looks kind of weird if I'm being honest. Anyways, you come up here. Grab this. Large Titanite Shard. And I believe... If you go over this way... Yep, I see another item. I wonder where all these corpses just come from. You know what I mean? Because like sometimes you have corpses just laying around here. Sometimes it makes sense. They're surrounded by enemies. Like, alright, they die. What about the ones just hanging off the rails? Or one's off in this like tiny obscure corner. Where did they how did they die? Where'd they go? Stuff like that. And you see this knight again, once more. Anyways, I'm actually gonna probably switch back to the dark hand because if I'm being honest, it'll do more damage than what we have right now. And And you find these enemies. Now they will be hostile to you if you come up to them, regardless if you didn't just attack them. Like I did punch. I do like the backs. I do like some of these weapons animations. Come right here. And you want to be careful because this area is very annoying with how it operates. You got a fire witch here. Well, actually give us a pretty cool weapon if you defeat it. And it's annoying because it will do stuff like that. It will call upon a little tornado of fire underneath your feet. And it will have these little minions following you around to try and stop you. And guess what? There's one up there as well. Pick this up. Large Titanite Shard. And we'll take it. Go restore Estus. And we have to be careful because that one will also start shooting flames at us. And you can do stuff like that. Now it's weapon that the uh, Fire Witch carries. It's called the Immolition Tinder, I believe. And no, it's not a dating service. <laughs> uh, it's a both a weapon and a catalyst. Now, like unlike the um, just the stabs that we get for catalyst, or just like the pyromancy tome, this weapon double the Immolition Tinder doubles as both a weapon and, a, like I said, as a catalyst. You could actually attack with it the same way you can attack with this and you could cast spells from it so it's kind of a good combination weapon the problem is its stats kind of ask a lot of you to be oh well, that's bold. to kind of like go into combination of both dexterity strength and I believe intelligence with some faith too I believe as well now if it dropped its weapon but it didn't so now I'm actually gonna do something smart here and just hide because if you see down there there's nothing there yet because we'll go down there later what I'm talking about hiding is that we're gonna see a pontiff two pontiff knights now I am confident in my skills as a player but dealing with pontiff knights are annoying to say the least so what you want to do is just want to wait for them to pass by or you can start walking out as long as you, I guess, stick to the wall here. And do not run. Because if you run, they'll actively notice you. But anyways, you want to go up here. And you can break this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You break that. Bam. Twinkling Titanite. And you're wondering, like, hey, Omega, you saw a gate over there earlier. Well, if you look like right here you see one that's down there well kick the wall and bam new area so what you want to do is be careful because guess what it's a freaking pontiff knight ah oh, crap but that will do large cyanide shard take it down and as you can see if you go further down in here you will come across another deacon lady but this one's just kind of isolated all by herself well there's a reason it explains in something that we can get from her what you want to do is you want to be very careful because if you get the back attack on this one it actually helps go up uh, uh. as you can see she has more health than your typical deacon lady so what we're going to do is that we're going to cast fire cast fire and bam you get Doris's Nine. Now, Doris here is a unique NPC. In fact, you only fight her once. This one summons great insect swarms to feast on their foes. Those who summons great insects. Those who linger too long on the brink of the deep will often slip. 
Doris is sure to have wallowed in this darkness, intoxicated by its peril. Evangelists. That's what they're called. Huh. Witch tree branch, which I believe allows you to catch faith miracles in addition to? Yeah, customary allows you casting faster than normal catalyst. Okay, no, it just makes you cast faster. Which is good. Okay, so we're going to continue on forward. You open this way up. Uh, even though I think Doris is supposed to be a unique enemy, I think she does respawn. Um, it does. But anyways, as you can see, we have to run back through here. And... Hopefully not deal with too much crap, like say... Those Pontiff Knights. And crap baskets. Okay, so... They're in our way. I'm just gonna fight one of them. Or both of them, if they... Hey! <clears throat> Oh, oh, God. Okay, okay. Uh, oh, oh. Okay, that was scary. Aha! No, stop spitting. Okay, we took out that Pontiff Knight. Now we gotta deal with this one. I'm just gonna switch to Dark Hand. Because Ultimate... Get that out of here. Ugh. Just a touch. And punch you in the chest. So you can just shield break most enemies, I believe, in this game with little to no trouble. So long as you do it quick, and you have to be quick about this because guess what? Hey look, two more knights. This one's more slim, but one's more thick. <laughs> there you go. If you get close, you actually see you have another emulation tinder fire witch. And two more <laughs> Pontiff Knights, excuse me. We're not going to go that way, because if you go left, we actually take the safer route, in my opinion. And something that requires eh, less trouble. You go through this way, and you can pick up this, the Soul of a Weary Warrior. Now, as you can see, there's another uh, Fire Witch here. We're just going to cast that, crap baskets, and that, I mean. <sighs> what we were going to do... was attack. But guess what? They noticed me, so time to leave. Usually they don't pay attention to me when you go that close to them. But anyways, you don't have to worry about anything here or there. What you want to do is you want to go over here and light the bonfire. As you can see, you have a knight here. Guess who it is? It's Henri. Let's go up and talk to him. children I knew, bless their souls. We all have our reasons, don't we? Please, take this, recompense for my foolish request, and also a token of protection. May the flames guide your way. Gives you the ring of the evil eye, which I believe belonged to the executioner that they escaped from. Now here's the thing. You still get the same dialogue, even if you tell them to go there. The only difference will be if you find Horus and leave him alone and immediately go tell Henri. Henri will go there and die. However, if you defeat Horus, go find him and tell him. He still doesn't find him, but he finds his armor, unfortunately, and builds a shrine there. But he does give you the Ring of Evil Eye regardless. Anyways, you can talk to him again and get a different sort of reward just by listening to him. Ah, you are brave indeed to face your duty alone. I would do well to learn from you. May the flames guide your way. And they give you the quite resolved jester. Now, here's the thing. If you're on the quest, you'll actually want to go to here. As you can see... There's a set of statues here, and you can, you know, punch every single one of them. They'll do something different. But if you punch that one, you get this. And how, you know I said I'm not doing this quest, because even though Darja is kind of a prick, she's not flat out freaking evil. So, if you don't, 
if you don't want to complete, this is another area where in which you can screw up. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to kill the pilgrim. Ugh. Because I want the quote-unquote happy ending, or the true ending. Now, if you leave that pilgrim alone, they'll lead Henri and then Henri will eventually die. Though they do come back in some form of way. The Henri will die, come back, but if you screw up that quest and attack the villager, your, the pilgrim, you will actually fail Yuria's quest and she'll just abandon you at uh, the Fire Link Shrine. Anyways, you pick up that way of the blue roster knights. That's just a ranking system to see how many people you saved while in invasions. Useless to us because you know I don't have the ability to invade or be invaded. Even though I love this game, I guess I just didn't play this for a while. And was like, oh well, you lost your thing. Okay, so here's a weird thing. We're gonna trigger something kind of neat. After, as you remember earlier in the last episode, we saved the night, we talked to Sir, Cirrus of the Dark Moon Knights. If you go back to Irithel the Boreal Valley, after talking to her and she listens to you saying, oh, you're a great person, you did pretty well. It's just saying like, oh, you're just a nice person and you don't join Rosaria's fingers, um, the Covenant. You'll be fine. Uh, you can actually continue along her quest unless you knew the secret outcome of it. And how to get there like I showed you guys. You can do something pretty neat. So what we're going to do is that we're going to go back here to the bridge. And then we'll actually continue her quest line by, well, going towards the bridge. Now here's the thing. There's a chance that this won't appear every time you show up. But this will always appear regardless if you're embered or not in offline or online. You can show this and you can answer series of the Sunlands Realms calls for jolly cooperation. And you'll be summoned as a phantom. Anytime you are summoned as a phantom, you are on unembered health and your weapon, you will be scaled down to around your partner's level. Unless you're so ridiculous OP, it does not matter. Like some invader, like some invasions I did where the people were, they had like max level characters on their side. But anyways, we've been summoned by Cirrus. And she needs our help for jolly cooperation because she's been invaded by Creighton the Wanderer. Who is quite the powerful um, enemy. And every time you're summoned, your, eight, your Estus is cut in half. And... Your any essence you have is cut in half. But as you see, Creighton, as an invader, is trying to kill Cirrus. And he has a divine blessing. He is the typical invader. And he always wills that Dragon Slayer axe, that's what it's called, with one hand, and he'll usually buff himself. He will only use the divine blessing if he's out of healing. Oh, can you get him in stun lock? Can you get him in stun lock? He got him in the stun lock. <laughs> but there you go. We helped Cirrus in jolly cooperation. And defeated Creighton the Wanderer. Thank you for your kind assistance. Blessing of the moon upon your journey. Creighton the Wanderer is defeated. Returning to your world. Now here's the thing that's also interesting. You know how I look the same? You will actually not look the same anytime you're summoned. If you are summoned by your companion, you will have this white aura around you, thus making you safe from being invaded. Or not being invaded. It's to distinguish you from the player. Now if you have the untrue dark ring on, you don't take that appearance. Or yeah. You take the appearance of your normal, like, default self. Now here's another thing that's interesting. We're going to actually go back to the church that we saw Henri in. And we're just going to go back and explore outside because there is another item that we want to get there. By going back to the church of Yorshka. Yes, that's how it's pronounced. Though I probably enunciated more on the Yorshka. 
<laughs> but hey, you never know. Do 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 do. But anyways, Audrey's not here, the Pilgrim's not here, and we pissed off Yuria of Londor because we failed the quest. Now, I'll get rid of the Dark Citadel site so that I'll actually free up my Untrue Dark Ring spot. Because Darja looks like Darja because, well, I have the Untrue Dark Ring on. But the more times you die, the more you're susceptible to hollowing, and the more you look like beef jerky. Uh, case in point, I'll turn off the Dark Ring. And bam, you see the skin change? You even see the little effect of like whoop, 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 whoop. There you go. So just imagine that, but worse. Anyways, you go over here, and you see one of these guys here. We're going to set him on fire. Because, and guess what? If you save uh, Cirrus, you get invaded by Kraten the Wanderer. He's pissed that you killed him. Ah, oh, dang, I tried to backstab him. Hey, how's it going, pal? Uh, we're gonna take this off and we're gonna put the uh, grass crest with you. But yeah, Creighton is just all offense. And he hits hard. No healing. Oh, you're gonna try and heal? No. Screw you. No healing. Be gone. And you get his item, the Dragon Slayer's Axe. You can actually miss this if you go too far in this area and don't... Well, you can still complete Cirrus' quest, but you can actually miss Kraten invading you if you don't... if you kill the boss in this area. Anyways, go behind this item, bam! Undead Bone Shard. I know this, uh... area. And... You know what? I will think we'll end the episode here. Yeah, I know it's another short one, but the idea is that, well, here's the thing. This area is big, and we also need to do a few more things in order to, quote-unquote, get stronger. Because this area does have another split that we can actually come to very close. But we're going to rest at the bonfire, get all our stuff back, and next time you see me, ladies and gentlemen, we'll actually complete... Well, let me say that, let me phrase that. We'll try to hurry up and finish Irrital of the Boreal Valley because there's still quite a few areas we need to go here. My name is Omega Zero, and I will catch you all later. Like darkness.